Guys, we have a lot to talk about today, starting with Olga Roche's departure as DCF commissioner. She's leaving after uh, three children who were on DCF's radar ended up losing their lives. This is a human tragedy, or three human tragedies first and foremost, but it's also a political matter. What do you think of the way the governor has handled the uh, ongoing controversy, controversy is maybe too soft a word, ongoing dysfunction at DCF? I'd say very poorly. I mean, a lot of the people at the State House say that the governor has checked out, and I think this is evidence that he had. By the way, if he had been more politically adept and accepted her resignation earlier, I don't believe these children would necessarily still be alive. Mm -hmm. But we don't know. And it's worth knowing, noting that about 10 kids a year die in DCF custody. Mm -hmm. This is not an anomaly. Very, very tough group of yes. parents and families to try to help. Of course, David, what do you think? I give the governor a little bit more slack on how he's handled it recently. Uh, I think that you have to fault him for letting it, letting DCF get to this point uh, under himself and under the previous uh, Secretary of Health and Human Services. Uh, what I would say about, uh, uh, about Olga Roche is that people who knew and worked with her, both within the administration and with you know, outside child advocacy groups remained very strongly uh, defending Olga Roche and very much in the belief that she was the right person to bring the agency, the, the department, forward in reforms. And he stuck with, you know, the governor stuck with what they were saying over the outside pressure. So that's why he rejected her resignation? Is that your understanding? That's, yeah, that's why he stuck with her as long as he did. And, and you know, as he said in, in accepting her resignation now, the outside loss of confidence was too much. Uh, just uh, a last final question. I, I hope I can ask this without sounding callous. Does this help Charlie Baker? Uh, the, the election's a long way away. Uh, he'll probably be able to make some hay with it. it. It plays into his narrative, but he has to somehow be able to transfer to the Democratic nominee the sins of the Patrick right. administration. Right. That's his challenge. Okay, a couple more things really quickly. What is your take on this idea, which is sort of out there in the ether of the commentariat, that Scott Brown running for Senate in New Hampshire is going to hurt Charlie Baker? run for governor here in Massachusetts. Uh, you know, right. I've, I've been thinking and talking about it myself uh, with people. I think there's a little bit to it. There's a few different ways you can see. Um, it, you know, there's going to be a lot of local coverage of that race. People are, you know, the, the media is yeah. clearly fascinated with the story, so that's going to take away from the story of, of covering the governor's race perhaps a little bit. Uh, there will be a lot of advertising that will be seen in the, the Massachusetts mm -hmm. uh, in that region, and, and that could play into people's dislike of Republicanism and so forth. Um, I think the one way that it could actually hurt a little bit is that Republican activists will take their time, energy, and money uh, yeah. north to help up Scott Brown mm -hmm. uh, up in that race, uh, taking away from the help that Charlie Baker needs here. That could affect a little bit. You've got some thoughts on Mayor Marty Walsh's speech to the Boston Chamber of Commerce. Quickly, what are they? I, I think that um, Walsh is in the process of developing a sort of comprehensive view of development. Um, uh, unlike Menino, who was very ad hoc because he wanted to control the process completely. Perhaps personalize it? And, and personalize it. Um, Walsh is trying to synthesize a lot of different things, and I would give him good marks for the way he's proceeding. All right. Both of you, I think, have a, a point you want to make uh, about an issue or an idea that has sort of not gotten a lot of attention to date. Let's start with you. Oh, well, I was just going to say that uh, we've seen that the this uh, rumble in the governor's race over the creation of super PACs, um, one in one promoting Steve Grossman that hasn't actually done anything yet, uh, one in, to help Charlie Baker that hasn't done anything yet, and one uh, by a labor group that has started running anti-Baker ads. I think what's interesting is that they have um, that they have come in at this point, which suggests to me that they that there's some thought of trying to affect the way people are viewing the candidates mm -hmm. before we go into the Massachusetts summer lull when people stop paying attention. All right. Okay, Peter, what do you have? Um, I've been wondering why the president, why the White House, why the vice president are obsessed with sexual assault on campus. Not to, not to uh, minimize that as an issue. I took a look at the, the latest Wall Street Journal NBC poll and the answer is there. That um, Obama's up a scant welcome three points, but that three points is largely because of women. The initiatives to stem sexual harassment on campus and crack down on it mm -hmm. is a political move to shore up the woman's vote. All right, there it is. Peter Kansas, thanks. David Bernstein, thanks. Thank you for watching The Scrum. I'm Adam Riley. We will see you again soon.